Hello everyone, this is Chuck, and welcome back to the workbench. Today I have a couple of Commodore PET monitor boards that were sent to me by Dave up north in Washington. Dave is in the process of repairing a couple of Super Pets, and he wasn't getting a picture from either one of them, so he's not comfortable working on uh, CRTs, so he sent these boards to me, see if I could swap them out for my pets, see if they work. It shouldn't take too long to do that, but first, I want to do a good visual inspection and check all the obvious or common problems before I put it in the pet to see if it works. A common failure point are these two resistors right here. First, I should say this is the board from a 12 inch monitor pet, not a 9 inch. The boards are very different uh, between the two. On the 12 inch pets, these two resistors here are quite common to fail. I'm not sure why, but I'll check those. I also noticed that these uh, DAG ground springs here are quite corroded, so I'm going to try to clean that up. These don't make a good connection. You've got no ground on your CRT, so you won't have a picture. Another common failure point is this brightness potentiometer right here. Because of its length, the fact that it sticks out, it gets a lot of stress on it. So we'll check these solder points right here, make sure that they're good, make sure that that pot's not broken. Right now I'm clipped onto R753, which should be either a 56 or 58 ohm resistor, I can't remember which. And although I'm measuring it in circuit, which is not accurate, electricity will take the path of least resistance. So 56 ohms is pretty low. We should be seeing 56 ohms or less on the meter uh, in circuit with anything else that might be reducing the resistance. So it looks like that resistor is open, which is a very common failure on these. R753 uh, and R752. And just to double check, I have some spare metal film resistors here for this. Should be 56, 57 ohms. Clipping onto the other board, this is R752, and we're seeing 69.1 ohms, so that resistor's good. R753 showing me 64 ohms. So that's not the problem on this board. We'll have to see if this one works or not. Maybe I can desolder this and just turn it around. I used a wire brush to clean up the rest of the corrosion on both of these. And I did a thorough inspection of the bottom. These connections here at the pot look pretty good. Don't see any problems around the flyback or anywhere else really. Components on the top side look good. I don't see any swollen capacitors. But I will go ahead and replace these two resistors. The schematic says R753 is a 56 ohm, 752 is a 58 ohm. It's not much difference. I have some 56 ohms in quarter watt and half watt, and I have some 59 ohms in half watt and quarter watt. So on mine, I replaced them with a half watt because then they're less likely to burn out. Okay, check these things out of circuit, just to be sure. That's open. And that's open. Of course, I want to reuse these standoff posts here, so I'm going to uh, 
can you solder the resistor from there? So couldn't find any 58 ohm resistors. I have a 59 ohm here. This is a half watt metal film. Just put it in there and uh, put it in place and solder it. Fifty six ohm half watt. Okay, 58 ohm here, R752. See if I can get it in there. And the 56 ohm. Well, I brought out my super pet so we can try swapping the board in and see if those boards work. First thing I got to do is make sure that this pet still works. If the pet doesn't put out a picture, then there's no way to know if the monitor's working. And we do have a good picture here, so we'll open up the monitor and swap out the board. Take out two screws right back here. So this board in here should look very similar, if not exactly the same as the other two. You have to disconnect the connector here, the ground. I have to disconnect the flyback transformer, but since it was just on, that's charged. So I'm gonna have to discharge that first. And then there are two plugs for the horizontal and vertical deflection. I prefer to use high voltage rated wire uh, just so I don't feel a shock. Now, this wire is only about 600 volts, but did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, that was a loud pop. There we go. Be careful when you're pulling this plug because you don't want to risk cracking the neck and the nipple right there especially. Here's Dave's board A. He's Wires on here. Well, it's easy. I 
I'm going to install this all the way back so that the DAG ground spring makes contact. This coating on the back of the CRT is the DAG or the AquaDAG. That's where the difference of potential is between the screen and the rest of the glass. Just going to screw a couple of these on here to make sure it stays in contact. Connector has a missing pin and an opening here. That opening faces this way. And then a high voltage. Stick one end in first, push down, there you go. Now it should work, if it's gonna. Let's see if it does. Give the tube time to warm up. Yeah, I'm not seeing a picture. Try adjusting the brightness. There we go. All right, so it's dark. I'm gonna try adjusting the sub-brightness. This is sub-bright. Turn this up a bit. That doesn't look too bad. The uh, picture geometry might need a little bit of adjustment. You take the main brightness down a bit and the sub brightness up a bit. It looks pretty good. A couple of other adjustments back here. Uh, right here, the horizontal or the uh, vertical height and vertical linearity. The horizontal width is adjusted here uh, on a coil. Now I'm going to take a look at the height and linearity. Okay, first the vertical height. Loosen it up a little bit. That's the last line, so we can see the whole screen. The linearity actually looks pretty pretty okay to me. The vertical linearity adjustment is about making sure that the height of the characters at the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen are equal. Uh, the distance between the scan lines is equal across the vertical lengths. Looks okay to me, I'm not gonna adjust that. And the height is good now. The brightness is not all the way up. That's all the way up. Take it down a little bit, still be visible. So I'm not going to adjust the sub brightness any further. The board looks good. It's definitely working. We need to discharge that CRT again. So I'm going to connect the ground. Make sure that's a solid connection. Get the microphone close here so you can hear. That scares the crap out of me every time. Because it jumps, that arc jumps way before I get in contact with it. Okay, now we got the other board here that I've marked B, and I didn't find anything wrong with it. Indeed, there may not be anything wrong with it, except maybe some adjustments. Fingers crossed. But those resistors looked okay. Put it in here and see what the symptoms are, if any. I'm going to make sure that DAG ground screen is pressing up against the the DAG there well. Just put in one side, push the spring down, and the other side in there. 
Good to go. Okay, here goes nothing. Pet chime. There's a loud buzzing noise and no picture. Buzzing noise not making me comfortable. That is a very odd buzzing noise I've never heard before. Brightness all the way up, sub brightness all the way up. No picture. Um, I don't see a glow from the neck, so maybe no heater voltage. I have to check the rectifiers and other power supply parts on the board. Not much of a pop there, but there was a slight pop, so that means there is some high voltage. There's something interesting that I just noticed. I was looking at my board. This is mine, my Super Pet, and uh, it's working, but I noticed these components here are not populated. Uh, but on Dave's boards, both of them, those components are populated. I have to take a look at the schematic and see what that does. Well, as I always say, start with the power supply. AC voltage comes in here, goes through a bridge rectifier, filtering capacitor, and a voltage regulator. This should have 18 volts DC out. Here it is on the schematic. AC in, rectifier, filtering capacitor, voltage regulator. 18 volts at TP1. Uh, you can see TP1 right here is not populated. So I'm going to hook into ground right here. I'm going to hook up to the 18 volt output right there. I don't need a picture right now. So I'm just going to hook up the board here on the outside. Nothing else connected except this meter here to measure the DC voltage. See what happens. Oh, and it's dragging down to 13 volts. So there's something wrong there. Okay, so I have the board hooked up here, and I want to check some of the voltages. This, uh, these two wires here are the AC pair. So it's possible to connect them up backwards since the polarity on the AC doesn't matter. And we'll apply power there and see what the voltage is that we see. Okay, you're seeing 26.6 volts on the unregulated side. On the regulated side, we're seeing 20.3 volts. And that seems totally normal. That's exactly what I measured on the working board. But let's go ahead and give it a video signal. Plug this in the right way. Turn it on, and once it gets a video signal, the regulated voltage is dropping down to 13 volts. So something is drawing too much power here and dragging the regulator down. One way to get an idea of what's getting hot is with a thermal imaging camera. So these big resistors here, about 80 degrees, it's off right now, so that's just residual heat. I'm going to turn the board on now and see if anything unusual gets hot. Regulator's heating up. I'm hearing the buzzing noise. Oh. Okay, I'm looking over here at a diode. The diode is up to 180, 222 degrees. Okay, let's check the diode. This is the known working board. So your multimeter diode check function will beep if it has a short, but what it does is apply voltage until you get a current flow, and then it tells you at what point the diode starts passing current. In this case, we're seeing uh, half a volt. If I reverse these leads, it should just stay overload, yeah. 
the negative on this side. It's a half a volt drop across that diode that tells me the diode's good. On this board, that's not working. That diode is a dead short. In both directions. So we definitely have a bad diode here. It seems to be causing this capacitor to heat up as well. These two are in the same circuit with the brightness control. So it would make sense that they're not conducting unless there's a video signal. Yeah, I checked my box of parts and I don't have any suitable replacements for this on hand. Uh, this is definitely a dead short though. So uh, I can order some parts, but what I, I kind of want to be sure that that's the problem first. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and swap the good diode out from the other board to make sure that that fixes the problem. Okay, I got both diodes removed. I'll go ahead and check them out of circuit. This one checks good. Double check reverse bias. That's the good one. This is reverse bias and it's showing a short. This is the bad one. Oh, and the lead just totally broke off of it. We've got the good diode installed in here. Everything hooked up. We're going to monitor the re regulated voltage and turn it on. And the regulated voltage is back down to 18 volts. No buzzing noise. And it looks like swapping out that diode was a mistake because this diode now is also a dead short. Okay, it's a couple of days later. Parts have been ordered and received. Replacement diodes here. Uh, one amp, 400 volts. One in 4004. And replacement capacitors. These are 47 microfarad, 250 volt, D754. Make sure to get the stripe the right way around. Here goes nothing. There we go. Looks to be working. Hopefully it'll uh, it'll work for a while. Leave it run for a few minutes and make sure nothing else burns up. Okay, just to recap, this is the board that was giving me trouble, and uh, when it was running, it was dragging down the. 18 volt regulator to about 13 volts. And a thermal camera told me that this diode was getting very hot. Uh, and I tested it and it was a dead short. So what I did is I borrowed this diode from the other board, put it in here, tested good, turned it on, worked for about a second, and then died and killed this diode. So now I had two bad diodes, so I had to order some. So what caused this diode to fail? Probably this cap right here. Uh, so replace this cap, replace the diode, brought it up, got a picture for about a second. Then it died again. And it turned out that these two resistors over here ended up dying. Uh, they were working before, they just burned up. So in the end, we replaced that cap. That was uh, C754 and D754. And replaced these resistors, all four of them from both boards. And now of course I want to retest this board after replacing that diode. So make sure you get these on right.
Spoke test. There we go. Good as new. Here's some of the tools you saw me use. My Hacko soldering iron, some magnifying glasses. This is my Fluke 115. Klein Tools TI-250 thermal imager. Didn't cost too much. The resolution's not great, but it works. These are some insulated uh, plastic adjustment tools for making adjustments around high voltage. And uh, these are just some insulated fluke test leads that I used to discharge the CRT. And of course I had to reinstall my original board to make sure that still works. And I've got two working boards now I can send back to Dave so he can get that super pet working. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.